Hi, I'm Carol Brewell. I'm a ceramics instructor at the Sproul Center for the Arts. I've been teaching here for 40 years, and they haven't found a way to get rid of me yet, which I'm very grateful for. Um, about a month ago, I did a video that was just short-term handling projects, five minutes or less. Today, I want to do some projects that are also five minutes or so, but the theme is going to be trompe l'oeil. And if you're not familiar with trompe l'oeil, it's uh, full the eye in French, and it's illusory. And it's a subject that's been interesting to me for many, many years. I've been doing it for years because things are very often not as they seem to be. And uh, it's that kind of fascination that attracts me to it. For example, if you're watching this video right now, and I hope you are, um, I'm not there. I'm here right now being filmed, but when you're watching it, I'm going to be doing something else. And what you're going to be seeing is a bunch of pixels on a screen, not me. But your brain's going to tell you it's me. So that's part of Trump Lloyd, too. So it's a fascinating subject, and it's fun to fool people sometimes. So I'm going to just show you some examples of how to do that. going to make a rock. So there are many ways to go about making a rock. Obviously you could do 3D printing or you could make a mold of an actual rock. This is an actual rock and just replicate that with pouring slip but I'm not going to do that. I made this rock which is clay and very lightweight and hollow from this rock here. This was just a river rock I had and I wrapped it with plastic. I took some um, clay just like a slab, rolled it around it I textured it actually on some pavement, and then when it solidified, this was on the outside of that, I cut a slit in it, opened it up, took the rock out, closed it back up again, made a hole so that the uh, moisture could escape and not explode, and then I had a rock. So uh, it's one way to make a rock. The one I was going to show you right now is much simpler. It's simply taking two pinch pots together and making a rock of most any size that you could make as a pinch pot. And this bowl over here was made with 30 rocks and that's what it's called 30 rocks and I made this bowl for um, the Sproul Center's 30th anniversary um, 30 rocks so that's what I did so I'm just going to take a piece of clay and when I make a pinch pot um, I just make a very fast pinch pot you could take hours to do it minutes to do it seconds to do it um, when you're making a pinch pot the important thing is that the walls are moderately uniform um, it doesn't really matter a whole bunch if it's thin or thick, but you do want it to be moderately uniform so it can dry pretty evenly, and that way you're not going to get too many cracks. So I'm making very fast pinch pots, um, and this is using maybe two pounds of clay altogether at most. And I'm going to just put these two together. If it's a little thick, it actually works a little easier for rock. So I'm putting them together. I'm not bothering with toothbrush and water. I'm just sticking them together. And then I'm joining them together across the joint. I'm not going along with it, but just so the clay from one overlaps the clay from the other, and it doesn't matter which direction you're going, whichever one works for you. So once I have this hollow form, this is just a way to start because it can't collapse because it's air trapped on the inside. So right now I can make it into any shape I want it to be. So I'm taking a piece of pavement, which actually is from the street outside my house before it was repaved and I'm just going to make some texture. Sometimes I might go into the driveway and just roll the clay around or find some other texture that's a little bit rocky and until I'm happy with it then I can just keep tossing it around until I'm happy. Um, okay, I think I've covered the whole thing pretty much. If not, um, so be it. So at this point, I have a rock, or I can open it up, and I'm so sorry, I forgot, I forgot, I'll be right back. I'm going to put this out to show you as a sample. This was made the same way over a rock, and what I did was the same thing I did with this one. I just uh, slid open the uh, outside, pulled the rock out, and closed it. 
but I made a slit in the top so this could be a vase. So you can have a vase that looks like a rock. You could make a teapot that looks like a rock. Um, anything that you uh, can think of that you might want to make out of a rock, even things that normally would not be rocky in the least little bit. So another thing you can do to get this a little bit more rocky would be to take a piece of foam and just sort of smash it on the foam. It bounces and it becomes more rocky because the actual shape of it changed. So you just do it until it pleases you. Like this sort of a potato shape. It could be a box. You could just cut something out of the top and have a little handle on it that might be another rock to extract, you know, just to pull it off rather as a knob. Um, just use your imagination. It could be anything you want, but it's a very fast way. So the next project I'm going to do is leather. Um, let me just say that this Trumploy is like Trumploy 101. These fast projects are fast projects, but if you want to do something a lot more authentic and realistic, you can put a lot more time into them, and you could be using fiber clay, and you could be doing a lot of other things that would add some more realism, but these are fast projects. Um, you can see on this little piece that I made, it has a buckle on it, and the buckle kind of adds some realism. The stitches add some realism to it. The label inside is going to add some realism to it. In this cup, it has a zipper on it, and the zipper happens to be open, and it has like the pull on it, and it has the ends on it, and that all gives realism. Also, having these grommets over at the ends helps. So all of these visual cues help to just, you know, make it look like it's real. I'm rolling out a piece of clay, and uh, this clay happens to be 266, which is a dark chocolate clay. And uh, one of the things with trompe l'oeil, if you're using a clay body that's very close in color to what you're trying to replicate, it's very effective because that way uh, the color is coming from within rather than being painted on the surface or a glaze to add the color which adds thickness and takes away some of the realism. So the, um, the rock that I had made before uh, was done with a speckled gray clay which is very rocky so you might want to add a little bit of a wash or other colors to it but the clay itself already has a lot of color in it. And start the realism off. So I'm going to take this clay and I'm going to cut a rectangle. So this happens to be about 6 by 14 and of course it's a fairly small um, satchel that I'm going to make. Something like that. I'm going to use the rest of the pieces for both the base and some of the other things that go on to it. I'm going to soften these edges a little bit so they're a little bit more refined. Is I want this leather to look like it's thicker here than it is down here because we're standing it up as a um, cylinder and to give this the appearance of being thicker I'm going to do an optical illusion. So I'm going to take a line I'm going to go down something like this here and I'm going to press my ruler into the clay a little bit and then just drag it towards me. The idea is to give it the impression of being two layers, but it's not two layers, it's one layer. Because the thickness here is exactly the same as here, but that shadow that I just created is going to give it the look of being a second layer of um, leather. Okay. Okay, I marked out 12 holes on this piece of cardboard just so I could have them equidistant apart. And these are going to be uh, where the um, holes are going to go because you can thread through a leather or um, actually a clay um, strip through it so that it looks like it's real. And the important thing is that you have an even number of these holes so that when you start from the outside, you'll end up at the outside, as opposed to one in the inside and one in the outside, which isn't going to work. So then I am going to take a tool to make stitch marks. And um, this tool is actually meant for leather, and it works quite effectively. So um, I can show you on a piece of clay the kind of line it makes which is very 
leathery looking as far as a um, stitch mark goes. You can also use a tracing wheel which is used in sewing if anybody still sews. This is a smaller one. There's a larger one which makes slightly more distant holes. Um, this is a tool that comes from China. It's also a hole maker and it makes very big holes. This comes in three sizes, but this is the smallest of the three. And um, the tool that I used for the, um, the leather tool, that's really meant for leather, these are other sizes of stitches that it makes. It makes four different sizes of stitches. You've got a choice. The one that's going to work for me right now is the first one that I did, which is this tool here. So I'm going to drag this um, along the edge, and I'm holding my finger at the edge so that uh, I can make an even line and have a little bit of control of where it is so that my stitches look a little bit more realistic. They don't have to be in a perfectly straight line, but they have to be someplace similar. And I'm going to make a line towards the bottom of that extra strip that I created. If the stitches are off a little bit, I could add realism too. And then I'm going to make a stitch down the side and make that a double stitch because that's frequently the way that a bag is made. And my next step is going to be to texture it. I'm just taking a piece of crushed paper and just doing that. It gives it kind of a leathery look without any effort at all. And I'm going to make a zipper in the middle so it looks like the pouch opens up and there's a pocket on the inside. So I'm going to take um, my needle tool and just make a slit. And just cut out this little rectangle. Leather doesn't usually have very straight sides, so if it doesn't have very straight sides, it's still going to be realistic looking. I'm going to finish that off a little bit. And um, actually, I could make a stitch line around this. I will have to ultimately, and it may be easier to do it while it's still flat than after I've put it together. So I'm going to make the zipper that's going to go behind this, and I'm just going to take a piece of clay. Uh, not quite big enough, so I'll take a piece from here. And I will take a zipper. Uh, the zipper could be an open zipper, it could be a closed zipper, but right now I'm just going to make a closed zipper. And it really doesn't matter which side you use because zippers are pretty much the same. They're, the negative and the positive are pretty much the same, so you don't really have to be concerned about that. And I'm just going to roll it onto the clay so that it's going to pick up the pattern from both the zipper and the fabric around it. And then I'm going to cut that out so I can put it behind here so it's going to look like the zipper is behind it. need all this clay here. It's a little bit too much. So shorten it a little bit. Okay. So I've got my zipper. So what I'm going to do, um, this is going to overlap this way. So, okay, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to just take this and hope that that zipper's right in the middle of the opening. Hopefully I hit it right. I'm going to flip it over and see. It's slightly higher, so I'm going to just move it down just a tad. There we go. 
so I have my zipper there. To add some realism to that, I'm going to end up putting a zipper pull on it and the end of the zipper over there, but I, I'll wait to do that afterwards. So right now, I'm just going to make this into a cylinder. So I'm going to take, this is my outside edge because it has the stitches on it. So I'm going to take my toothbrush and water on this edge. And then I'm going to put the toothbrush and water on this edge and connect those two together. And hopefully they'll come together before I get to that last hole because I don't want to cover that hole up. I need it to put my, my cord through or my lacing through. So I'm going to just move that over just a tad so they're overlapped enough to attach together. Okay, so now I'm going to put a base on it, and the base is going to be hopefully big enough. So, I'm just going to guesstimate as to where it goes. I'm going to turn this over so that I can use a toothbrush and water on the bottom side as well. I'm not making any effort to make it um, uniform because generally leather is kind of malleable and uh, whatever form it takes is probably okay. So I'm going to just take a needle tool and cut around the base wherever it happens to be in this very irregular kind of shape. The more irregular it is, the more interesting it's going to be. A lot of trompe l'oeil is more effective if it becomes um, aged looking like it's been used a lot. So when you mutilate it a little bit, sometimes it's to your advantage to do that. I'm going to tap it down a bit, give it a little bit more movement on this side. And I'm going to make these move so that it looks like it's being tied together with whatever cord you're using so that it gives it some realism. But you want to make sure those holes are still available. You can just move it in like that. And you can push out on the inside too if you want. So I'm going to make a pull for the zipper, which is usually tapered. I might be able to use a straw to make this hole here. And the smaller hole on the other end. Um, I will have to use a different tool because I don't have anything small enough in the way of the straw. I'll just take a needle tool and kind of make a hole out of it. And then I'm going to take the tiny little piece of clay. The details are what give it away and what makes it look more effective. So any little details that you can add to it are going to add to the realism. So I'm just going to make this little piece that's going to attach it to the uh, zipper itself. So I'll just take the end here and here. Like that. Attach them down. I'm doing this backwards, so I'm not sure where it is, but um, to give it the look that it's attached to the zipper, not to the leather, so I'm going to move it down a little bit. This can stick out a little bit. And then the very end here, I'm going to take a little piece of clay to make that end, because the zipper always has an end on it. So, uh, as I say, this is this is a trompe 101. This is not the best trompe -oil. it's the fastest trompe -oil. You can take a lot more time to be a lot more fastidious about it and more detail-oriented, and um, you can make it a lot more complex if you like. This is simply a starting point. So that pretty much is the bag. I'm going to make some napkins.
and the napkin I'm making right now is going to be a cloth napkin. This napkin that I made in clay is a uh, paper napkin. I'm going to do that next, but the one I'm doing right now is cloth, or meant to look like cloth. And I'm going to cut a square. Um, I'm not measuring it, but I'm hoping it's close to a 12 by 12, or maybe less than that. doesn't really matter. If it matters to you, obviously you can measure it. So, um, I'm going to take away this extra, and this is my napkin. So I'm actually putting it in, into two napkins, in between two napkins. Um, I'm going to put it, well actually, no, I won't roll it until after. So I'm putting it here, and I'm going to put the other napkin here so that I have the texture on both sides. You don't have to put it on the back. But it's kind of a nice extra thing to do. So I'm going to just take a rolling pin and roll it just as I do with everything. To get the texture deep into it, I'm rolling pretty aggressively. Just so that the texture becomes one with the clay. Um, and gives you a sharper design than you'd have if you do it weekly. So it's a good time to put a little strength into it. I'm going to flip it over and put the pressure on the other side so that uh, it will also have the texture as deeply ingrained into it as in the other side. Hopefully I have it on both sides enough right now. So I'm going to just soften my edges a little bit because this cloth napkin is going to have a soft edge. And then I'm going to take my tracing wheel that I use quite often and I'm going to cut through the fabric, well not cut through it, but I'm going to make a mark through it, to this edge. And the reason I'm going through the fabric instead of just onto the clay is because I'm going to get a puffier edge, which is more indicative of an actual stitch on a napkin. So you'll see when I lift it that I should have, I have to find that edge, I should end up with a more realistic kind of a puffiness, which you would have if you were stitching like an, an, a napkin, a real napkin. And because I'm left-handed, I'm going to have to turn this around this way. Instead of going backwards. And I hope that I'm in the right place. I'll find out in a minute. Now I'm going to just lift this up. Well, I'll just refine these edges first a little bit. Oh, I still can. So, um, you can have an edge like that. As a matter of fact, since I came in a little bit too far, I'm going to fake it a little bit uh, with my needle tool and just take a little of this excess off here. Sometimes you just play with these things till they look the way you want them to look. And I'm just going to refine that, pretend that it was always like that. The other edges are pretty good except right here. A little more off there. And then when you're happy with it, you're finished and you have a napkin. So what I'm going to do now, actually I can leave it, no I can't because I need that. Um, I'm going to put it on a piece of plastic and I'm going to lay it in here so that it'll form into a shape that it can be used as a bowl. I'm going to peel it off there and just put it in like this. And because the clay is quite soft, you can manipulate it so that you can make it like a nice bowl. I could use for a lot of different things and just have it very napkin-y looking. You can make as many fold pleats as you want just to make it more organic if you like. And pretty easy. That was less than five minutes, I think. So that's that. The next napkin I'm going to make is a paper napkin. So this is going to be a paper napkin. Not too different, but a little bit different. Then you just roll it out a little bit more to get slightly thinner. And then I'm also going to put it between two napkins because I want that texture on them. Uh, and uh, again, I'm not measuring it. I'm just cutting it. Napkins come in different sizes, so there's really no need to make it precisely anything. So I'm cutting it into sort of a square. And I'm going to do the same thing by putting this fabric on top of it, hopefully with no creases, 
and rolling it in. I'm going to flip it over. Put the other piece of fabric on top of it so it's sandwiched between the two. And then roll that. I'm going to press quite hard. But one thing for a paper napkin that's different from a cloth napkin, on a cloth napkin, there's a thickness to it because the cloth has a thickness and when the edge is rolled, there's a thickness to it. But obviously, paper doesn't have a thickness to it. So in order to have more realism, if the edge happens to be more paper-like, which would be incredibly thin, I can kind of try to thin down that edge now, which is going to make it look like the whole thing is thin, even though it's only the edge that's thin. That's part of the optical illusion of trap So, um, I'm going to just do that a little bit more to get that edge a little bit thinner and tapered. And then I'm going to remove it. I'm not doing a stitch because paper napkins don't have stitches on them. And I am going to put it, take it off here. And what I'm doing is I'm going to make an edge on it. Because paper napkins very often have a border on them that's embossed into it. And what I use is just a bottle cap um, that has these ridges in it, which kind of make a really nice texture. So I'm just going to go roll it around to give me sort of an edge that you might have on a napkin. And because I thinned it out, it's going to add a little bit more to the realism there. I'm going to go around all four sides. And I have one left to go. that just gives me a paper napkin with a thin edge that makes it look more papery. So if I wanted to put this inside of a bowl, I could just take a piece of plastic with that and uh, also put it into a bowl so I have a paper napkin. I'm using white clay, but if you wanted to, um, it could easily be embellished with a pattern on it. For example, gingham or a pattern that you might use for either the cloth ones or the paper ones. That would also enhance the look. But I'm just pressing this in, and because it has a thin edge, it's much more papery looking than the one that was done the other way. So you can just arrange it any way you want and have a bowl that would look like it was a paper napkin. So I hope you've enjoyed looking at uh, some of these techniques. As I had said, this is Trump Boy 101. This is easy stuff, and it's very quick stuff. You can put as much time into it as you like and as much detail into it as you're feeling that you want to do. Um, I will be doing a lot more projects to show you, you know, other kinds of trompe and I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen so far.